Thanks for the support as a channel member, Richard Blythe. Well, the people have spoken and spoken pretty emphatically, as you can see by this lovely little graph that's appearing over my head now. Over 2,000 of you voted in the poll about what I should do next. And two thirds of you decided I should leave Tottenham and go to Bayern Munich. So firstly, we need to we need to change this. OK, and now we need to do the traditional house hunting stuff before that, though. If you are upset about the move and you didn't vote, because 2,000 people voting after over 8,000 people watching the video at the time I'm recording the follow-up, that means only a quarter of you voted. If you're upset and you didn't vote, maybe next time vote. Let's, um, let's do some house hunting. So first of all, of course, we have to start things off on Google Maps. Of course, currently living in London in a house of many chairs. For me to drive all the way to Munich is an 11-hour drive. Obviously, we're going to have to move house. Even if we decided to get the train, um, that's 10 hours on the train. Why would you get the train? It's only an extra hour to go in the comfort of your own car. I could cycle. Cycling from London to Munich would take me 61 hours. I suggest it would take me a little longer than 61 hours. Can you take bikes on the Channel Tunnel? I did not know you could take a bike on the Channel Tunnel. I've never seen anybody do it. I'm intrigued. Or we could fly, and it only takes an hour and 45 minutes. But... What? Connecting through? I don't know what that means. I don't want to fly anyway. Airports are, airports are a little bit iffy at the moment. So, as we now know we've got to move to Germany, the first thing, of course, that we need to do is check the good old Halifax mortgage calculator to see how much we can borrow. But it, <laughs> it seems that with everything that's going on in the world at the moment, the mortgage calculator is not working. I suggest they probably don't lend uh, in Germany anyway. We're probably going to need to sort out a German bank when we get there. There's lots of nice houses available. They're all in euros, though. So I think we need to move and then find a German bank and sort it out that way. So in the meantime, we're staying in an Airbnb. This is the one that I've selected mainly because their, their promo picks were this lake and all these chairs. They know what to put in their the 63 photos. We're not going to go through all of these. But look at that second shot. They've not even shown the outside of the house yet. But they've shown me an enormous chair. A weird chair with no back. Little cheap Ikea chair. Table with eight chairs. They're just really... Oh, look at it. Chair, so many different angles on these beautiful chairs. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Separate secret chair room there. That room is literally just a big chair and a little chair. It's just, oh, chairs under the telly. I don't know why you'd want to sit there, but maybe you would. It's just, that's literally just a case of cramming chairs in. Just so you, look, more chairs there. That's the chair room from before. Um, that's a bathroom. No chairs in there. A little bit weird. There is somewhere to sit down, though. Chair next to the front door. There's no reason for that to exist. No one gets all the way to the front door and thinks, oh, I just need to sit down. Coffee machine. But yeah, it's, um, it's a chair palace. So we're going to be staying in this Airbnb for a little while, once we're settled into Germany, um, then we'll look about buying a house. But, you know, I'm earning so much money, less than I was at Tottenham, but so much money, I can afford a bit of an Airbnb. So, uh, I guess all there is left to do is roll the new intro. Hello, Mugging the Club 5, part 1 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, well, actually, coming up on today's episode, the first thing we need to do is actually leave Tottenham, because I am still officially Tottenham manager at the moment. Um, is there anything we need to do before we say goodbye? Let's just, should we put Banfalvi on the transfer list? Should we offer him to Bayern Munich? They don't want him at the moment. I, I suggest they'll want him in about five minutes' time. But let's get back into these negotiations. I almost clicked walk away. That would have been worrying. So we are going to start negotiating. And um, we don't need to get into the ins and outs of why the move is happening. We did a lot of that discussion yesterday. I know there's reasons for there's reasons for staying and there's reasons for going. It is a pay cut, but it's a pay cut. I thought there was going to be multiple offers there. It's a pay cut from a club that have threatened to sack me within a month. So at least I've got a nice, secure three-year contract by coming here. I want to try and squeeze a little bit more money out of them. Um, but it looks like they are absolutely standing firm on this £140,000 a week. What a weird place to draw the line. No, it's 140000 or nothing. So I am off to Germany. FC Bayern approach Chapman. There's your confirmation there. Um, do we? I guess we just I haven't moved jobs for ages. I've forgotten how it works. So theoretically, we should just appear in Germany. There we are, FC Bayern Munich hire Chapman. 
in a move which is likely to is sure to spark plenty of heated debate. I mean, it's like the game knows about the comments section. Kevin Chapman has left Tottenham to join FC Bay, and questions we raised as to why Chapman made the decision to change jobs. They all face pressure to bring immediate access to Allianz Arena, given his former employers and previous standing. Tottenham will now be looking for a new manager. Tottenham will be paid £20 million in compensation for me. No wonder. Tottenham are laughing. They've threatened to sack me in a month's time, and I've gone, not only am I going, my new club are giving you £20 million quid. Is that all right? Why this lot haven't just waited for me to be sacked? I don't know. I Or told me to just go and have an argument with the board and get myself fired. This is madness. Um, but, you know, imagine being Bayern Munich and I'm being announced as, remember that guy who failed at the World Cup, failed at the Euros and hasn't really won anything with Tottenham? He did win Skybet Championship Manager of the Year in 2024. So, you know, there's that. Um, if we hit next and have a little look to see what the situation is here, the media are predicting a first place finish, which I don't know how realistic that is, getting my excuses in early, because this is an ageing team. You can still see they've still got some players with real faces, but they are old men now. Danny Olmo, 32 years old. Kimmich, uh, 35 years old. And they're, they're the only ones still. I'm sure there are a couple more still knocking about as well. But it's a team that's going to need some refreshing. And although it did win it, although they did win Bundesliga for like 20 years in a row, that all ended two years ago. If we have a look at the history... Um, so winning it for the first time, not the first time ever, but the first time in this sequence in 2013 and then won it every year until 2027. How boring German football must have been for that 15 year period. But since then, there's been a second, a second and a fourth. So there is de a definite decline going on in Munich. Um, I don't know how Montella didn't manage. In fact, look, they've had this. They've had these guys who were there for years. But then he got sacked after a year for failing to turn the tide. He got sacked after a year, after two years for failing to turn the tide. I think I think I get two years as well because if we have a look at the club vision, and um, they're looking for us to challenge for the Bundesliga this year, but not necessarily win it. So as long as we're being competitive this year, it's next year that they're going to expect us to go and win the league. And this is the squad that we inherit. So if we have a look at who our best players are. We've got a uh, a Portuguese central midfielder who looks like he's the best player at the club, star rating wise. And having said that, I don't think we've even got an assistant manager at the moment. So take that with an enormous pinch of salt. Yeah, there's no assistant manager, so that needs to be one of the first things that we address. We're coming in on the first of July, so it's the perfect time to take over at a new club because we can just we can get involved in a full transfer window with an enormous transfer budget and nearly two million pounds spare wage budget. So I can do a, a full rebuild this summer. If I need to, and I think I probably need to, looking at some of this. Um, Alex Catamol is gutted to see me back. Played 51 times for Colombia. Barely played any football, though, at club level for years because I was in his way. And now here I am again. You may as well just leave. And watch him go and become a star. He'll be the, the player who would have been the missing piece of the jigsaw at Tottenham. It is a little bit of a worry, though. It shows you how much... How much of a lower standard this squad is from the one I left? Alex Catamol couldn't even get in my first team squad at Spurs. He's what the eighth or ninth best player at the club here, so there is there is some definite work to do. And the fact they're still relying on players like this at 35 years old with only two and a half star ability, I don't care if the fans have a great affinity towards this player. He's 35 years old and not good enough. He is going to be. On his way out. Likewise, someone like Danny Olmo. I'm not going to be messing around with 32-year-olds. That's mad. They're looking for me to come in and do exactly what I did at Tottenham. But, OK, not exactly. They want me to do, theoretically, what I did at Tottenham, but actually win stuff as well. They want me to come in and refresh the team with younger players. Younger, homegrown players. Which I think I can definitely do. Um, first job. How? In fact, let's... Have a look what's going on with the centre backs just before I do it. Yeah, see, we've only got one good centre back. So, if we've got a signed German, we know a German, let's go and make an offer for him. And 96 on his scout report is that recommendation. Tottenham don't want to sell, apparently. Well, let's just make an inquiry. They don't have a manager at the moment. I think we're going to declare interest as well. I don't even remember how to do that. Declare interest as top target. I think I'm probably on his favoured personnel list as well. 
So hopefully we can unsettle him and get him to come and join us here in Germany because that would be perfect, undroppable due to form for country as his international media opinion. That is mad. Absolutely mad. So, looking through the rest of the squad, we don't really have anything in the way of strikers. Central midfield, we've got a couple of decent options, which is nice. Likewise, in the wide midfield. Defence, this is the one guy we've got who's any good. Presumably, this is Banfalvi's um, centre-back partner for Germany. A centre-back wearing number nine as well. And I'm I'm not changing it. He's keeping the number nine shirt. It's his shirt. And um, we could probably use a left back, but we have got a goalkeeper who I actually tried to sign for Tottenham earlier on in the transfer window. It had a deal agreed to bring him in for like £120 million. And I thought, you know what? He's not that much better than Francisco, so I won't. But he very nearly became a Tottenham player very recently. So the, he's a decent keeper. I think it's pretty clear we just need to we need to polish up the attack more than anything. If we can get Banfalvi, which is a big if, but we've got a lot of money to throw at Spurs. If we can get him, get a proper world-class striker, I think we go a long way towards building a team here. So at this point of the video, it becomes a little bit of a, a weird first episode because we kind of jump back into the transfer window now. We sort of did a half transfer window yesterday with Tottenham. If you're new to the series because it's an episode one and it's a new club, um, I guess it's all fairly normal stuff because we're just joining a new club, and we're we're, we're now going to try and we're now going to try and sign some players. So I'm going to go away, do some transfers, and then come back, show you what I've got, and hopefully build an awesome team here at Bayern Munich. So um, yeah, Banfalvi is our absolute number one priority. Let's see if that. And I don't care that you're unhappy. I don't know who you are. Um, except this guy is surprised that I'm the new manager. I don't care. And hopefully Banfalvi is now wanting to come. Does he want to come? We don't know yet. Right. Let me uh, let me sort out stuff in the background, like what my staff responsibilities are, tactics stuff, figure out exactly what I need to do, and then we'll start making some transfers. So it seems Tottenham aren't necessarily willing to let me have any of the stars. Can't get Banfalvi, can't get Jair. So I'm looking more at the fringes of what we had at Tottenham. Um, Leo Guerrero I think he's a decent option Antonio Carlos went off the boil a little bit last year but we know how good he can be and he's still got a very good scouting report so I might I'm, I've got offers for both of them there's a very good chance you'll see them appearing very very soon we also have an assistant manager identified um, by my director of football he doesn't look very good is that really? That must be for a youth team job, surely. That's all right then. <sighs> Panicking for a minute there. Um, Carlos is a little bit of an iffy one for 90 million quid. But I know how good he can be. And I could make him good again. Maybe. Okay, proof that the Spurs chairman was a lunatic. They haven't even got a new manager yet. But they've lost their minds. But Monty's on the transfer list. This just seems like an absolute no-brainer for £60 million. I'm just going to bring all of my Spurs players here. He was the pl Premier League player of the year two years ago. We spent £96 million quid on him. We can now get him for 62 Can we spread that out on the never-never? This will bring our Spurs signings up to three if we get all of these. Um, so, yeah, we'll pay your £62 million, but we want to do it like this. Does that work for you? I reckon we could still get that down lower. We want to we want to turn this two hundred and twenty million pounds I've got to spend into a billion pounds, and just buy all of the footballers. That's just got more expensive. We said sixty two million. What was it we did before? It was that, wasn't it? This is what happens when I mess with this guy. Do that then. Okay, fine. Vermonti might well be on his way in which would be a huge signing. First signing is in then, and what a signing he is. The Football Writers Player of the Year from just over a year ago, Matty Avermonte. Um, sign, send him on his language course. He can live in my Airbnb with me. Um, I cannot believe we've been able to pick up a player of that calibre for that price. It's ridiculous, and it is going to change my thoughts around tactics because I was thinking a 4 2 3 one I'm now absolutely thinking a 4-3-3 with Vermonti 
at the base of it, playing his natural oh, deep lying playmaker role that he plays so well. And now we just build a team around that. Player number one is in. Quickly followed by signing number two, also from Tottenham, Leo Guerrero never really got a chance at Spurs because he had Banfalvi and so many other real top defenders ahead of him. But he's still only 24, 11 caps for Brazil. Um, he was wanted by many, many clubs. He's had time on loan at Real Madrid and Porto. So he's played in a lot of Europe's major leagues. And the big difference he's going to get coming to Bayern, or Bayern, I will try and learn to say it properly, um, is, uh, is that he'll actually play Leo Guerrero is in and we can stick him straight into that back four he can go there and then this guy who was already here can go alongside him see he's a midfielder i think isn't he no he's a defender so he wants to be a ball playing defender on cover that's fine you can be that and then guerrero is going to be that alongside him so those two in. We have our centre-back partnership. We have our goalkeeper because we know Ferron is good. Um, well, I think we had full-backs and wingers as well. So we've actually got the makings of a decent team here. So he can be out there. He can be out there. Striker we definitely need. We haven't got a good enough striker yet. Um, central midfield. We've got a couple of decent options. And then we could maybe do with maybe do with one more in midfield. I'm not sure how I feel about him. We definitely need a striker. So actually, we're going to take him out. How do we? I just want to take him out. Go away. I don't want anyone in there. Clear position. There we go. And then left back, we're sorted for him. We can maybe use a left back. Kimmich, the old man. So I think we actually still need two fullbacks as well. So let's get him out. Get him out. It's not bad. We're getting there. My strange relationship with this guy continues. I was convinced he was going to come with me. He's gone to Atletico. Probably not a disaster. He is 28 and we didn't probably didn't need him and Carlos. But I really wanted him because of how and because of our unusual relationship that we have. But no, George, I hope that's not setting a precedent of players going elsewhere. I'm hoping to finally, after years of chasing him, be able to bring in Ian Hendricks as my other central midfield player. So that's my goal for there. Carlos, I still want to bring in as my striker. And then we'll just need to find fullbacks. So Jair, we've already tried and Spurs are not. They just laughed me out the door at trying to bring Jair in. Um, there he is. Not interested. So we need fullbacks. Assuming we get Hendricks and Carlos, which hopefully we will. But we have upped the scouting package to worldwide, which it was like Europe. And that was it. It was mad. Bearing in mind, this is a club that's got nearly £800 million in the bank. I know they want me to sign German players from Germany. But as far as I'm concerned, if I deliver them the league and the Champions League... They won't care what nationality their players are. And if they do, they can sack me and I'll go and manage somewhere else having won trophies. That's my thinking. Uh, Bayern, Bayern 2 are signing lots of players. We've still only got the two. Gibbs White's on his way. Spurs are being disassembled and they still don't have a manager yet. This is exactly what happened before I arrived under the previous ownership. Sold their best player before the new manager came in. If I was joining Spurs as manager now, finding out Vermonti had been sold, I'd be very, very upset about the situation. Antonio Carlos is in, and I think he is going to tear the Bundesliga apart. My theory that the Bundesliga is a weaker league than the Premier League, and that the top six Premier League teams were the top six teams in the world, I'm testing that theory now, because Carlos was good at Spurs, if he comes in and gets 25 goals for us this season, theory confirmed. I've just spent £90 million to test a theory. But Antonio Carlos is in, which means we can now add him to the team just there. He's going to play as an advanced forward. And we're getting there. Get Hendricks in there. He can be a winger. I like. I like how this is shaping up. What does he actually want to be, a playmaker? Well, I'm afraid Vermonti's our playmaker. I trust him far more than you, man I've never met. 
Florian Lust with 85 caps for Germany. You're like a midfield version of Banfalvi. You know Vermonti. We're getting, oh, I'm, I'm excited he doesn't want to be that. He can be that. See, he wants to be the covering defender. So maybe we make him the covering defender. And he can be the defendy defender. Who's quickest? That's usually how I pick my covering defender. So he's got 16s. Okay, the other guy. Leo, I'm sorry, the other guy's our covering defender. You both want to do it. You can't both be covering. That's madness. A couple more signings. Still loads of money to spend. It's an insane transfer budget. Well, you can tell Kev's arrived in Germany. The £90 million signing of Antonio Carlos. A Bayern Munich record. A German <laughs> record. We're here to spend the money. You give me all this money to spend, I'm going to spend the money. What did they think I was going to do with a £200 million plus transfer budget? Well, that scuppers my plan a little bit. It looks like I'm destined never to sign this man. And he would have been perfect as a Mazzala in that central midfield. Alas, he's gone to Inter. So I still haven't signed anyone who wasn't with me previously at Tottenham. I now need to go back to my shopping list. Um... Just job offers and things happening now. Still lots of money to spend, but also still lots of gaps in that squad. Yeah. So Tottenham now have their new manager, Massimiliano Allegri, who was previously at Liverpool. So he's left Liverpool to go to Spurs. There you go. Proof that's a step up. Previously of Barcelona. So he left Barcelona to go. Previously Bayern Munich as well. So he's not, he doesn't get sacked, this fella. Um, he was sacked by Juventus by the looks of it, but then immediately came into Bayern, who he then left for Barcelona. That's an encouraging sign, um, presumably after winning lots of things. Left them to go to Liverpool, left them to go to Spurs. So I'm like four rungs down in a career upgrade that ends with Tottenham. I'm not going to get... I mean, he's going to do quite well there, isn't he, presumably? Um, I wonder if he stuck anyone else on the transfer list, because at the moment there's just lots of players leaving. And um, David King's now left as well. But the exodus from Spurs continues. My boys, my lovely Brazilian boys, are all leaving. Um, anyone else on the transfer list? I'm not going to bring Rosso in. That, I feel like that would be a mistake. Although, to be honest, if there's loans to be had for these players, both of those two on loan, I could get on board with. Has he put Fodderingham on the transfer list? He has. I don't know that Matt Fodderingham is good enough. And I also don't know how he's going to get English players in his squad now. Fodderingham, I mean, he's a decent backup in two positions. But do I want to Do I want to bring someone who just, he's a little bit older. With the other two, you can justify because they're younger. I'm definitely going to try and bring Rosso in on loan. They're reluctant to let him leave on loan. Well, what if we pay all his wages? Hmm? Just make that offer. And we're going to do the exact same thing with Marcos. Because if there are clubs in for these players on loan, we'll take them on loan just to fill out the squad as players I'm familiar with. And really just to take them away from Tottenham because I want Tottenham to fail after I fell out with their new board. A couple more signings. Firstly, assistant manager Angelo Peruzzi comes in. Um, he was actually here previously, which I didn't realise. Um, he was here for a year um, with a manager who got sacked after a year. So has been here and been sacked previously. The fans will love the fact I've brought him back. But the reason I like him, Gagan Press, 4141. It's exactly what I'm planning on using. So perfect. Um, we've also brought in our first non-Spurs player. Um, it's another Brazilian striker, um, Tafarel Heleno, 25 years old. He's one of those who we get these occasionally because we only just turned the Brazilian leagues on. He kind of magically generated them. So the fact he's never played for Brazil age 25... Ignore that. He's going to be awesome. Nine goals for 16 in 16 games for um, for Corinthians. Already as good, if not better, than Antonio Carlos. Leading player for most Bundesliga sides. He's very quick. Um, he can play on either wing as well. He can play as a pressing forward. And um, we have our two strikers now. And they're both Brazilian because, of course, they are. Because that's all I know how to sign in this game, apparently. Um, so give him a squad number as well. We still need a central midfielder. I think I've got a left back identified. Um, who? Oh, in fact, he's there. There you go. Max Thum. Um, let's just get him confirmed in as well so we can have a little look at him. So he is 
our left back Max Thum, our first German, 21 caps for Germany, uh, natural wing back at left back, three and a half star current ability, four star potential ability, another leading Bundesliga player, he's been at Leipzig the last couple of years, he's cost us £60 million, pounds, um, but he completes the defence, because we already had a right back at the club, I just somehow, I don't know if I was scrolling funny before, or just completely missed the guy that we already had who can play at right back, but this guy, Kriziu, is very good at right back. So he's in as the right back, and we can now put Toom in there. I'm just going to start calling him Thumb almost immediately, but for now I'm going to try and be German about it. And we still just need a real world-class central midfielder, and we've got £100 million to go and buy one. If we'd have got Ian Hendricks, the squad would be done now. Um, as it is, we need to keep looking to try and find a central midfielder. And such a thing is proving hard to find. I'm hoping Gravenberch magically becomes available. He is wanted by Man City. Let's try and... I mean, he'd be perfect. Or Rot. Either of them would be great. Um, see, he's 28 years old. That's the problem with Gravenberch. But is a proper world-class midfielder. We know. I don't know why I'm looking. I know he's great. I might ask my board to just sign him. It was there as an option. Board, deliver me Ryan Gravenberch. And then the squad is done. Yeah. I am disappointed, but you've got cool glasses, so I'll let you off. Hmm. Of course, now we've got our new assistant manager in judging things. He thinks this guy's good. Um, Rodrigo Marquez, four-star player. Um, I guess he probably is. Atletico want him. He can play anywhere up the middle. World-class midfielder, so he can slot in there. Um, my concern is I don't really want to play two. Don't really want to play two playmakers because you know not really allowed to. Miles told me, but this guy can't really do anything else. I'm certainly not switching Vermonti to something else. So I'm leaning towards this at the moment. I'd want the Mazala on this side because if he's cutting inside, he can kind of go round him, whereas he's going to stay wide as the winger. I kind of want this to be a ball-winning midfielder here. But he's one of our better players, so I'm not going to sort of take him out of things completely. It's not a disaster to have some strength in depth. If we have a look at the team report, that's exactly what we are building. Two very good strikers. I don't know why we're looking at that version of the tactic. Um, with decent wide options, a couple of decent central midfielders with some old men for backup. Very good defensive midfielders. Um, we could probably do with another centre-back and maybe, an, maybe someone who can magically play both fullback positions and maybe the goalkeeper I was going to buy for Spurs. Goalkeepers just don't get star ratings in this game. I think that's what I've learned. Marcos is hopefully going to come in on loan as another centre-back option. They did, wouldn't let us have Rosso. We'll just keep we'll just keep looking to see what's available. We've still got nearly a month until the German season starts, so plenty of time to find someone of suitable quality. World Cup goal of the tournament to Kev Hattrick. So current star um, Lust gets... Uh, Lust. So we've had... No, I'm not going to list through all the names we've had this year. Um, he got goal of the tournament. Francis Vance, runner-up. And Tete, who is our right winger, um, he got the other one. So they're all good. Um, and this is the team of the tournament. Lust getting into that alongside Carter in midfield. Keith Crown and Vance up front. Did England go and win this tournament? England look like they've done really rather well here. My word, look at Francis Vance's international career. 14 goals from 13 caps. Let's give him a little bit of a scout. Have England just won the World Cup? Vance has won. So England runners up in the World Cup without me. Um, but Vance is England's new superstar and I wasn't using him. Named in the World Cup Dream Team, best youth player, won the golden boot, the golden shoe and the golden ball. So what's that? Top goal scorer and best player at the World Cup. My word. I couldn't get a game out of that boy. I blame him. Absolutely blame him. Right, we've moved away from just Tottenham players now, he says, with Marcos about to join on loan. But apart from him, we've signed a couple of German absolute wonder kids, starting with Matt Dombrowski, Dombrowski an elite fullback. Yes, he's cost me over £100 million, but he is a five-star current ability 21-year-old right back. I mean, we're talking better than Jair quality. So he's in. Let's get him. Welcome to the squad. Um, assign him a squad number... 
we are going to start moving out some of the existing players now. We're starting to really bring some players in. He's like our Kimmich replacement. Um, and then we've also signed a 21-year-old German centre-back, Joe Chim Harman, who's been given squad number one. And I love that. That is my favourite thing I've ever seen. He has been auto-numbered the number one shirt. Sensational. Um, he's a three-star current ability, five-star potential centre-back who was at Stuttgart previously. So starting to meet some of this, bring German players and German-based players in criteria. So that's him in as well. And we'll just confirm the Marcos loan deal as well because you can never have too many Tottenham players or centre-backs. You can see we're playing Tottenham in a friendly in a second as well. Um, I'm not going to manage it myself because... I mean, I would, but context, it is currently half past 11 on, on what is it, Thursday. Whatever day this video is coming out, it's half past 11 in the morning. I haven't made the new intro yet. I haven't done the new graphics yet. I haven't finished the video yet. I haven't edited, rendered and uploaded the video yet. And it's got to be out for four o'clock. I don't have time to be playing no football matches. Thank you very much. Um, this guy is going to be going out on loan, I think. Although, to be fair... He's not a million miles away from the squad. So I don't think he is. Hold on. As an actual left winger, he's our second best left winger. No, you're not going anywhere, son. You are sticking around. Reject. Are you on the loan list? Because if you are, you're coming off. No, you're not. Well, then everyone needs to go away. Let's mark you as not available for loan. So loan status, unavailable for loan, sorted. Um... Right, we have spent a lot of money, as you can see, but we do have a number of players hopefully leaving, um, including Kimmich, including Danny Olmo, including some of the other old man defenders. So before we can bring anyone else in, we're going to have those depart, but the squad really is starting to take shape now as we've got some pretty good strength in depth in lots of positions I'm feeling very confident about this season ahead. They brought me in to do a Kev-style rebuild. That's exactly what they're getting. Loads of youngsters, loads of Brazilians and loads of players from former clubs. They knew what they were getting when they signed me and that's what they've got. Right, that's my seventh choice centre-back on his way out, Klaus Schmadke. Um, he's gone to Sevilla for over £22 million. Pounds. It's... Um, it's mad, really. Firstly, it's mad that they signed him. I don't really get that. But mad we can get so much money for someone who is never going to get anywhere near our team. We still need to do that a few more times to bring those finances back in line. Um, but I say again, they knew what they were getting when they brought me in. They're getting it. I thought I was safe bringing another Brazilian in because there's so many players leaving. So we've got a Brazilian wonder kid. You have to have at least one. Pinga is an 18-year-old um, Brazilian under-20 international. This no-work permit thing in Germany is fantastic. I can just buy all of the wonder kids that I want. He's an attacking midfielder. He can also play central midfield or up front. Um, he's not necessarily going to come straight into the team um, because there's quite a lot of players above him in that pecking order. But a five-star potential uh, Brazilian youngster just and apparently he's already played for our B team which is quite impressive and got an assist so lovely little Brazilian wonder kid what more could you want let's welcome him to the club even though he's already played a full match for us give him a squad number as well and uh, get him registered into the squad because we've got a 99 player squad as well the Bundesliga what a league what a wonderful place to go and hang out now we really need to sell some players we lost 1-0 to Spurs, by the way, who are also doing a 4-3-3 now, it seems. I'm not worried. Looking at that team they've put out. <laughs> I'm not worried. <sighs> Kimmich has gone. He has been a fantastic servant. Been at Bayern. Been at Bayern for 15 years, nearly. Um, and won lots of Bundesligas, but has now gone to Benfica to finish off his career. And um, we gave him a nice little pat on the head on the way out. So that's freed up some wage budget a little bit. Our goalkeeper's not happy that he's gone. Do you not remember me spending £110 million on a new right back who's better than him? No. Um, nobody's bigger than the club. It's time for us to make some new legends. Some players are bigger than the club, and Joshua was one of them. Letting him go was a huge mistake. You what? Um, I've already brought in his replacement. Look, it's done now. There's nothing going to change. It's put... Huh. We're going to bring... Sorry, I'm not really confident that we'll be able to replace him adequately. We already have. Look, he's left and that's changed. And that isn't changed. So please just put it behind you and move on. We've discussed this enough now. Well, that's upset him massively. Problem, maybe. 
unhappy at sale of club legend Joshua Kimmich. But he was on so much money. Surely there's no logic in keeping him around. <laughs> He'll come back next year when he retires as a player. Um, Danny Olmo, we've got an offer in for him, so let's get him out on the same basis. That's probably going to upset people as well. But you know what? We've got this problem to solve because I'd still like to bring in one more player. I love bringing in players. Bringing in players is my favourite. That's a good-looking squad now, though. See, where do you fit Kimmich in there? Not needed. I, I guess he could have done a job with backup right back. But that's no... He deserves to go and have one last payday and win something with Benfica. He's not going to play for us. I'm second-guessing myself now because of that grumpy goalkeeper. Another old man out as we continue to bring down the average age of the club. Ozan Kabak um, had been here just a couple of years, so no sulking that he's gone. But gone he is. He's gone to Paris FC, and we are slowly but surely bringing this back into the right direction. And as far as I'm concerned, we're doing it without harming the makeup of that squad at all. So we've still got ready to leave Danny Olmo, this guy. And then he might go out on loan somewhere. And then we should have enough money for another player. I don't know what I want. I'm not even looking at the moment. I'll look once I've got the money. So I know how much I've got to spend. I want one. More. I want another superstar. I just don't know what flavour of superstar. You can see I'm bringing in some scouts as well to really help with the uh, the scouting setup, which was severely lacking. The whole backroom staff, there really is huge gaps in it. So... I am currently working on filling those gaps to try and sort out this staff situation as well. So lots of scouts on their way in. There'll be lots of coaches on their way in soon as well. Um, and they're all happy. What are they unhappy about? Several players. Well, oh, you idiots. You idiots. What's the matter? We're disappointed with the sale of Joshua Kimmich. I'm a step ahead of him, guys. And I've already got his replacement. Um... I'm afraid he wouldn't have had a place in the squad. No, no, unfortunately. No. Mm. I don't know what to say to them. Unfortunately, he just wasn't up to the standard required to play for the club anymore. It's a shame, but he had to move on. That's fair. There you go. Them lot, their, their heads are screwed on right. It's just that stupid goalkeeper who's the problem. Good. We've kept the dressing room atmosphere intact. Danny Olmo is going to be leaving. He's going to be leaving. I don't know. Who is Fritz Brodman? He's a, perhaps we need to get rid of him as well because he's not any good. We don't want unhappy players, so let's get rid of this guy as well. And then the only unhappy player will be Ferron. So maybe the player I bring in is a goalkeeper. After almost signing him for Spurs, I'll then replace him in the same summer. He's, I'm, I'm getting a new strange relationship with a player, boys and girls. Another fringe player gone, Giuseppe Besnia. Um, who's only 25, 59 caps for Switzerland. Um, he, he's just another example of the last couple of Bayern, Bayern regimes um, bringing in players who just weren't to a standard to play for this club. I don't know why he was signed. Um, I don't know why he was here. He's just not good enough to play for this club. And now he's gone and we got £33 million for him. Um, there's our scout report on Vance. Don't think they're buying him any time soon. Um, we have another scout meeting. We're still trying to get rid of Danny Olmo. Um, before we work out how much money we've got to spend. And also, we've got no wage budget until he goes. So we're keeping an eye on that. We're about a week and a bit away from the start of the new season. I don't know when the transfer window closes in Germany. It might be that it goes all the way until the end of August, in which case the season will start before the window ends. So there might be more business after tomorrow even. But for now, we'll just keep trying to get rid of players who aren't happy. So it's him and he just needs to cheer up. I don't know how I'm going to cheer him up. Perhaps I wonder if he's ticklish. Right, I have a chain of deals that I've put together that if they all work, this squad is going to be absolutely sensational. To make it work, I'm selling all of these clauses that I've just found to bring in lots of extra money. By sell I don't know why they've not been selling these clauses. It's like they don't know how to play the game. But now all of a sudden we've got £86 million to spend again. But within our wage budget, still haven't sold Danny Olmo. There's three other players who've gone on the transfer list. At least two that are coming in. Watch this space.
we have another German superstar youngster, Agron Gashi, um, £120 million, pounds, a 23-year-old uh, right winger slash striker. We've brought him into play on the right wing, but he's five-star current ability. He is a current German international. Tete is 30, so it makes sense to bring in another world-class German to play on that side. We're doing what Bayern Munich are supposed to be doing, and we're just hoovering up all of the best German talent to go with our Brazilian superstars, Antonio Carlos developing concerns. Don't worry, son. Goodness me. What's the matter with you? You've you've been here a few minutes. You don't even know if you're in the team yet. Um, there you go. I've calmed him down. So our team report now looks like this. So, I mean, that's ridiculous that he's the best player in both of those positions. Because of that, I'm trying to sell this guy, who's on £375,000 a week, um, because I just don't see him getting anywhere near our team. Another example of someone who's been overpaid for and isn't good enough for the team. I'm also trying to get rid of this guy who's on £375 a week, £1,000 a week. Another example of that. So hopefully those two are going to go. I have another Brazilian wonder kid who I want to bring in who's a left back. Danny Olmo still hasn't gone. If we can get rid of those three players, that would bring in, theoretically, £800,000 a week in wages wages to spend. Realistically, we're probably going to have to make wage contributions, which I'm not against doing, but I am very happy to have brought yet another world superstar in who also happens to be German, which is awesome. Too right that's going to sell some shirts. Van Falvey, the, the door is still open if you want to come. We're assembling the German national team. The offer's there. In a half million pounds, he's gone to Norwich. Um, are we paying? I think we are paying a little bit of his wages as well, but it's not a massive issue. Um, the other two proving a lot harder to get rid of. Um, it looks like they might. They're on so much money. Three hundred. I mean, it's Mason Greenwood style insanity when I brought him into Spurs for that kind of money and paid him far too much money. But I need to get rid of them because if I can, there's always the opportunity for more players. If we can find one of him to go on this side. This is really turning into a really very good team. Very quickly. I'm very happy with how this summer's gone. I've probably wrecked dynamics. Not so much, I guess, because a lot of them know each other either from Tottenham or the German national team. That's or the Brazilian national team. They, I'm signing players who all, all know each other already in little groups. So I imagine those kind of social groups are likely to be forming. Um, mostly Italian players who speak English. Fair enough. Um, you would think they'd be hanging out with Carlos, um, who I don't even know where he's hanging out. Who is he friends with? He's up there with the players who've been at the club for roughly the same amount of time. Catamol, by the way, I've offered out for transfer as well because... We all know I'm not going to play Alex Catamol. He's so far down the pecking order. Um, and I want to bring in another central midfielder to replace him because I just don't think I don't think he's the man for me. But I need him to go before I can do that. My next Brazilian wonder kid is in Eduardo and um, comes in from Flamengo for £16.75 million. Pounds. We don't need to look at Flamengo, we need to look at him. Um, he's going to be our backup left back. He might even go out to the B team or out on loan because he's probably not quite ready to be pushing for the first team yet. But another 18-year-old Brazilian wonder kid. There's, I expect to see a lot of these with so much money floating around the club and the, the fact we've got a B team and there's no work permit restrictions any decent Brazilian player who's under 21, who's less than 20 million pounds, who comes up on a scout report with a good recommendation, they're coming in because why wouldn't they? Um, I thought that was going to be another one there, but he's too old. I'm not signing a 28-year-old. This isn't an old person's home, goodness me. Um, and then we have another offer for loans for this guy. Are they actually going to offer a bunch of his wages? See, they're not offering much of his offering for much of his wages, but he's not going to be in our team. So there comes a point where we may as well just get him off the wage bill for the season. Hmm. Offer me more wages, Everton. You know, you know you can afford it. You're a Premier League team. <sighs> Catamol is gone. He's gone to Leipzig, which presumably means that's going to be the club I manage next as I just follow him around, ruin his career and then sell him on for big money. Profit each time. He's a strange player. A strange player indeed. But we're now cruising towards £100 million pounds of budget again once we get rid of it. We've still got players we're trying to get rid of. I do feel another big signing coming on, but we are running out of time to fit it into this video.
Another backup player gone for crazy money. Andrea Tolomeo um, was like fourth choice left back, fifth choice centre back. He's gone to Schalke, £30 million. I don't need to keep saying it. You know he should never have been here, but the transfer budget is ticking upwards again. We still haven't sold those two big players who were on uh, on mega money, but we've now offered them out for about £30 million each and included in the offer that we'll pay £100,000 a week of each of their wages. So I don't know if that's going to tempt anybody into making an offer for them. I suggest it probably won't. Oh, in fact, there you go. It already came back in. No offers for two players. I think we're just going to be stuck with them unless we can loan them out. I mean, they'll be useful squad players to have around the place. They're not terrible players. As backups, they're great, but they're far they're on far too much money for backups. And they are not going to be starting football matches. Let's see, £150,000 a week. That is really tempting to get him out. £55 million pound signing last time. It looks like he was great when he was playing for Betis. But then um, Rosso from Spurs was great playing for Betis. I wonder if we can maybe bump it up to there. Oh, I forgot to increase that one. But you know what? At this point, as no one wants to sign him, let's try and get them to pay a little bit more. Yeah, we probably could have gone even higher. But you know what? If they're going to pay us nearly a quarter of a million pounds a week just to get rid of him... That works for me. There he goes. I know we're kind of helping out a, uh, a rival by letting him go to Leipzig. But it does bring us back, almost back within that. If we can do the same sort of deal with the guy, I'm happy. Because I've got one more I want to bring in. Well, it looks like to get Van Falvey, we're going to have to break a £200 million transfer. Which I don't think we can do. Interestingly, Germany did win the World Cup. So the fact we're assembling the German national side really does bode well because Germany have some good players and now a lot of them play for us. Apparently Kawamata is one of them. So read into that what you will. We've played our first competitive game. It was in the German Cup. I didn't feel the need to show you it because we were always going to smash them. A hat-trick from Gashi, though. He is already looking like a superstar. Already thinking of renaming the series from Gash to Gashi if you weren't watching since King's Lynn. That makes no sense. If you were... It does. Worryingly, we did pick up an injury to our superstar new right back. He's going to be out for a month, which is a little bit of a problem of a hamstring strain. And our left winger has a tight calf as well. So not a completely faultless display, but 8-0. The one big disappointment was the fact that Antonio Carlos was awful. Um, so that's his big return to Germany, is it? Of course, he's returned as a World Cup winner as well. So... He's, uh, you know, the last time I brought a player back home who was good internationally, it was Jaden Sancho at Spurs, and that didn't work out well. But Gashi seems to have started rather well. Uh, but what I was saying about Carlos, I had to take him off and stick Avramides up front, who was actually very good, to the point where I'm tempted to take him off the transfer list because he's got the flexibility to be able to play in all these positions. I don't think it hurts to have four strikers in the squad. We've already got rid of the other backup guy. So you know what? You can come off the transfer list. We'll remove your asking price and just reintegrate you back into the squad because you played well. You earned your spot. We have one week of transfer window left to spend £85 million. And I feel the need to spend it all. I just saw a world-class midfielder based in Germany there. I didn't read him properly. But if we go back this way and filter for central midfielders... Where is he? He was at Dortmund, wherever he was. I wish I'd have actually noticed. I guess it was this guy. 24 years old. French international. He's another one who wants to be a playmaker, but he can do box-to-box -box midfield, which is what I really want. So a box-to-box -box midfielder to go into that midfield. It's going to cost me 100 million quid, but then at the same time it weakens Dortmund, which has got to be a good thing. If we have a look at the season preview... We're favourites, Dortmund's second favourites. So if we take their player off, in fact, he's in the Media Dream 11. We almost have the entire Media Dream 11. This is like the early days of Bourne. And um, we've got the goalkeeper, the entire back four, Vermonti's in the back four. One of the midfielders, we're about to maybe buy the other one. We've got both wingers. What we don't have is the striker and the attacking midfielder. Um, but I think on that basis, I am tempted to, to try and buy this guy. 
I think he kind of fits the criteria of missing piece of the jigsaw as the box-to-box -box midfielder that I'm after. Let's see what we can get him for. Andre is in. He cost eight, £95 million. Pounds. Um, I mean, he was exactly what I wanted. That's the midfield finish now. I have got one last audacious offer in with Borussia Dortmund um, for their striker as well. Where is he? It's a £100 million pound offer. This was the striker for the Dream Eleven. He's a 100 scout report. Sign whatever the price player. We haven't got the money for him at the moment, so we've now offered Tete out because he's going to be a backup for us. And De Silva, who was one of our other backup midfielders, I think it's going to be push and go whether we can get that deal through. It's £50 million up front, 50 on the never-never. It's going to be tricky, but we'll try. Um, we also got rid of that guy, Brodman. So there might still be a little bit more business. We're going to sell more clauses. We're just trying to get as much money together as we possibly can to try and get this last player that we don't necessarily even need. It's more a case of, obviously, he's going to improve the team and massively weaken our nearest rivals. Um, but we don't really need him because we signed two strikers already this summer. Um, and we've still got one we're trying to get rid of, who we definitely don't want to keep if we're bringing in yet another one. Um, but that sorts all of those out. I'm going to try one more time to get rid of the, the striker who I've just taken off the transfer list so that I can try and get the other one in, even if not Antonio Carlos, even if it's just a case of getting him off the, um, getting off the wage bill for offering him out to loan. But let's try one once more. We'll offer him out just to try and get Thorgus in. Well, we have just run out of time before the season starts to get these final transfers in, but I think it is happening. Because if we have a look on who's going out, Eduardo's going out on loan. Um, Avramides looks like he's going out on loan. There's a few offers we've accepted for him. Tete, there's a £37.5 million offer from Swansea. And De Silva, there's a £21.5 million offer from De Silva. The deal for Thorgerson is agreed. It's ready to go. We just need about £60 million of transfer budget to cover the upfront fee and the signing on fee. We've got £40 million. He's only going to be earning about £200,000 a week only. So with him coming in and the other two going out, so he's on, so that's 100000 for him. They're going to pay half, they're going to pay all of his wages. So that's 300000 there. Um, and then they're paying half of his wages. He's got, I think he's going to Paris FC, who have had a tycoon takeover. So that's about half a million pounds off of wages going, 200000 coming in. We'd still be a little bit over our wage budget, but probably with a bit of transfer budget left to wiggle things around a little bit. And then we are done. Then we will be complete. But I think that's been a summer and a half. <laughs> My word. I was not expecting to spend... I mean, ultimately, it's going to be well like £850 million. Pounds. My biggest ever transfer window. I think I'm pretty happy with what we've done. We've got to win the Bundesliga first time of asking. And I think realistically with that kind of spend we need to be competitive in the Champions League as well let's see how this season goes but that was a very long episode one um, if you enjoyed it please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me it would be nice to get back to the old the giddy old days of 2000 likes on an episode like this but telling you at the end of a long slog like, slog like this probably isn't the best way to go about it one other thing to remind you of that I should have already reminded you of Homer back by the way um, that's over on Twitch so if you don't follow me on Twitch twitch.tv slash 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 lelujo I'm streaming a new FM20 series with Home my created club from last year that's coming out three, four times a week over on Twitch. So check out my Twitch channel. Replays for that are going to be going up on Lelujo 2 here on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe there too. And thank you very much for watching.